Oh, but hello. Let me get you up here live. Ooh, I noticed YouTube's been making some changes. So, tonight, we are going to cut some pictures. For the next journal. So tonight's going to be part one. Of the next journal that I want to make. Because. When I was in Vivstream. I know a lady named Maria. Who is wanting to learn how to make the journals. I have a lady went and learn how to make the journal, so I'm going to start tonight with the next journal that I will be working on. Hey, Sharice, how are you? So how was your week? So far. Mine has been pretty crazy. Very, very crazy. I've had an interesting week to say the least. some reason I can't find my little tiny cutter. I don't know what I did with it. So I'm going to wing it. Christmas is right around the corner. Okay-ish. So I'm going to start a journal. Um, there's a lady I mod for on her in Texas. She has jewelry sales. Viv. She goes by Texas Sparkle Boutique. And uh, Maria's like, I don't even know how to begin to make a journal. So I'm going to start a new one. So that everybody can see from the beginning to end um, how to do one. Even though I just finished the Paris ones, I figured I would do it and I'll label so she can find the lives better. Let me pull this back some. But um, right now, tonight, I'm going to get some of the ephemera. Now, what I did was I went into Etsy earlier and I typed in Christmas Digitals. So I bought some digital kits because I like digis. So I found some real cute ones. Hey, Sandy. Oh, great, Cherise. What are you training for? A job or... Something you're interested in or what? There's my sassy Sandy. <laughs> I 
Sandy. Yes, it's been forever since we speak, Sandy. <laughs> so anyway, I, I think this is going to go on the cover of the Christmas journal that I'm going to be starting. I haven't picked out the book yet that I'm going to be ripping apart. But here is, I think I'm going to use this for the cover because I think it's cute. It's kind of old fashioned. I like that he's looking in his little naughty list. Look down there. I see Field's name down on that naughty section. <laughs> hey, Brett. What are you up to? Oh, I don't know. I see Brett in that naughty list, too. Brett, Brett's right over here. I don't know. Him and Field. He might share the same line on the naughty list. I'm looking at Santa's pictures over here. So, like I said, I'm going to start a new series this week. And it is going to be how to make a journal. And you guys can learn from this too. This doesn't just have to be a female thing. But I had it requested. Somebody wants to learn. And so I'm going to put part one so that they can follow easier. Hey, Dance. <laughs> Field. I don't know. I see Cole over there by Field's name. <laughs> I gotta pick. Oh, shoot. But, you know, Brett, he's just downright naughty. <laughs> Let me get it in here. Hold on. It takes time, dance, but you will get there. Um, you would be amazed at ways you can network. Do me a favor, though. Please don't stick your links in. I'll do it for you. Because I do believe it costs people subscribers when they do their own links. Thank you. Hey, Rhea D. Cynthia was helping me for a while put the links in for me. But I can do the channel links. And plus, if you're blue, you can right-click and go right to a person's channel. Um... It's all right. I give people a chance, Dance. I'm not that strict compared to some people. But um, this way you can click and go right to a person's channel. I mean, if you want to put other people's links in, you can. And somebody will do yours. That's up to you. Yeah, that's me too. I never drop my own link either field. People tell me to do it, but I never do. Let me see if I can get you in here. Hold on. We got to put it to a test and I couldn't believe it. Like every single time we did it, we lost subscribers the next day. Like it was really weird. But, I mean, you go up and down anyways because, you know, YouTube's a mess. <laughs> Enjoyment, Brett. <laughs> He's funny. Okay. Um, I'll put Brett's link on here. Brett is from Whatnot, just so you know. Let me get him in here. He um, is into coins and he does really cute mystery sales and stuff on whatnot. If you don't know what whatnot is, I'm telling you, go and check it out. You can meet YouTubers there too. You would be amazed. You already dropped your link. Hold on. Let me get everybody else. Have some patience. Hey, Joe. Joe is have at it. There you go, Field. 
we get her in here. She's another crafter. Love it. And how have you been, Miss Jo? Here is her channel. Field, if you want to. More power to you. Who else was in here? And I, and I still put people in even if they don't have channels because you never know if they are going to change their mind someday and have a channel. Um, and some people are on here just to support channels and they never want to have a channel. But, um, to me, I follow people that have channels and don't just for the fact that they also find you. You know what I mean? If you have a supporter, they hit your button and me following them back gives them a better chance of getting the notifications. So that's why I do people even if they don't have channels or not. Because you just never know. Let me get Sandy's in here. Oh my gosh. I know. I'm trying to make a little money on the side. So um, I've been busy over on my side and I'll see people pop up and it's like, darn it. I'm in the middle of trying to make some extra cash and I see people go live, but I'm in the middle of it and I can't stop. So let's see here. This is Sandy's link. My sass is Sandy. We'll put her in here too. But um, did you guys get the emails from YouTube about having your own handles? Have you have you um, did anything about what your handles are? I haven't filled mine out because my link's already in this name. So I'm just leaving it as is. But my second channel that's going to be coming out soon, hopefully... <laughs> I don't know when. I just can't seem to get the time to get it off the ground. I want to work on it first and um, get it motivated. Because I do have a second channel I want to launch. But right now I need to work on this one. So, like I said, I am going to be cutting ephemera tonight. So, there's not going to be a whole lot going on but me cutting paper. So that way I can pay more close attention to chat and try to get links out when need be. But um, right now I'm working on the ephemera. I have no clue what I'm going to use out of this stuff. But it's definitely going to be a Christmas journal. I hate cussy cutting. I call it cussy cutting. But I will be making a Christmas journal and hopefully Maria will be able to come in or watch videos because she requested it on another stream. She wants to see how a junk journal or journals made. I, You know what? My journals are just journals. I call them crafty journals because people got different definitions of junk journals. And, you know, junk my philosophy is this <laughs> junk journals are supposed to be anything you're supposed to be wanting to throw away in the trash can you see me wanting to throw this away in the trash not so that's a true definition but what i think is scrapbookers kind of crossed over and card makers craft they they jumped into the junk journal community so it's all mixed up because really, a junk journal is not supposed to be store-bought papers. So, I call mine a crafty journal because I can do both. 
I can upcycle stuff and use it in mine, and I can use new stuff. So I'm calling my community the crafty journalers. <laughs> that way there's no, well, that can't be a junk journal if it's got new stuff in it type of complaint. Because you know we got our complainers. But there was a bigger YouTuber that did a definition of them. And she, she covered it quite well. I was pretty impressed. Because she's been at it longer than me. So I'm not complaining. Because I never heard of junk journals till I came to YouTube. I was just a book lover. I have always loved books. I could live in a library and never get sick of being around books. Definitely was a library nerd. And I did spend a lot of time in the library in high school and middle school and locally. As a matter of fact, I wish I could get more local here recently. But, um, I don't fight over definitions. I just create. And I had a bunch of books that was falling apart that came into my used bookstore when I first opened it. And I ended up recycling a bunch of books because I didn't know a such thing as junk journaling. If I would have known, I'd have had a lot of book board. But anyways, I always had a habit when a book was falling apart, though. This is what I find interesting. That would come through my bookstore. I would cut the pictures out. I've always done that. And I have had diaries since they used to have the little lock and keys. I wrote in my first diary. We figured out how old I was. How old did my husband say? 13 was my very first entry. And I wrote from like 1967. I never missed a day. 1967. 1979 to like. I used to remember. They all got burned up in a fire. But that's another story. So I lost a lot of my journals. Which is very upsetting because. Um. It was more for, like, my mom would come out. We always relied on them. I didn't realize how much people loved the diaries that I kept. But my mom would be like, what year was that when we had this family reunion and we did this and this and this? And I could go right to my journals and look it up. Because I never used, when you got the ones with the lock and key, you had a little tiny space. And it was like a five-year diary. And you had that little space to write in. I use the whole page. I can't just do the little tiny. So I would write the whole page and the five-year diary turned into a year diary. Then I would use composition notebooks. I would doodle. I would put stickers in it. I was constantly doing little pictures. Like So I was already junk journaling before I knew what it was. So I didn't dye papers and stuff. Thank you, Dance. America's not perfect. America's a mess. <laughs> but thanks for inquiring. Where are you from, Dance? America is... Lord knows what's going to happen to us in our future. But, um... So, you know, I always thought it was fun, but then... When I started journaling again, when I picked it up again after, you know, because it was devastating, losing all of my journals in a, in a fire, and it was devastating. It was such a loss. So, when I started writing again, because I was so devastated, I didn't write for the longest time. And then, when I did start writing again, it, I skipped around. Like, I would just go buy a book and just skip around, like, important events and things like that. And then I started writing again consistently. And then when I got into junk journaling community, I was happy because it's like it was meant to be. 
So I stayed consistent and I started buying some journals off of people and then I learned to start making them, but I never kept my own at first until one day, because you know, I like sharing stories with y'all. One day I did a, um, altered book one and it was in a six by nine. You know, because I was grabbing smaller and just random. I didn't pay attention to really much of the size and stuff. And I got this six by nine book. And the more I started creating it and was going through it, because I sold all the ones I've made so far, um, I fell in love with the book because it was me. It's, it's when I, when it came time to sell it, I'm like, I'm not selling this when I'm keeping it. And I'm so glad I did because it not only determined the size that's my favorite, which is a six by nine. It, um, just, I love it. <laughs> and it had the altered part of it. Like they didn't have signatures. I just added a lot of my dyed pages and different things. And I just, I love the way it laid out when I would write in it. It stayed flat. It didn't try to curl. That's why I think I like the six by nines better because it opens up for me to be able to write and stuff. And I have used it already. And I was, yeah, I can keep one that I made. It was different. Because <laughs> I, I think it's just. A thing is when you're a creator, you tend to like everybody else's work over your own. It's like a curse. I always think everybody else is better, but then I've met some crafters. They're like, you never, people should never judge their work against someone else's. They should do their own, but that's hard to do. So, um, Hey, Katat, it takes a little bit of, um, you know, time to get used to your own work. But now that I have, I'm good with it. So now I can keep some of my journals and I can also sell and I can still buy from people. Let me get Katatsa's channel in here. Hey, mystery. How are you? But I think it's nice to roll ideas off of other people and, whoops, it's supposed to be an S. Hey, John. Doing pretty good. Hey, Kyle. Oh, my goodness. Look at you all rolling in. And thanks to you guys, you males for coming in too. Not that I do appreciate you females. But thanks for you guys coming in too because I don't have a lot of males in my, um, that shows up in my studio. So it's nice to have males in here. And who was, somebody was in here and said, there's never any males in your stream. Randy, are you still in here, Randy? All these guys are males. <laughs> <laughs> Randy's the one that said that. He said, I had more females in my stream. I said, uh uh, I get equal. Let me get Kyle's channel in here. I don't know if Randy's still in here or not. I wish he would sit still for a few minutes because then he could catch some of you guys. And here's John's link. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, get mystery. I didn't know that Dill and Cement were brothers. That's too funny. Thank you, Sandy. And some people have more than one channel, too. Here's Mystery's link. <clears throat> Heck, Mystery could even be Dill for all I know. People change names. I can't keep track of people. I thought these were cute, too. Um, I hit Etsy up today. Because, like I said, they have beautiful paper pads that's out. And they retire them. And some of those paper pads can be expensive because I love Stamperia. I think Stamperia's got beautiful paper. And that was the very first paper line I ever purchased. And let me tell you, I have good taste. <laughs> I picked one of the most expensive paper lines, not even realizing it. But that is the very first pad I ever got. It was their lace. The lacy one. Old lace, I think it's called. But anyways, I still have it. I pet my Stamperia. <laughs> but when you get digitals, the one thing that I like about digitals is they're not as expensive. They can be just as pretty. And you can print them over and over and over again. So if you want more, they're yours. You know, once you purchase them, you can print as much as you want. And I kind of wish paper lines would do that. When they retire their paper lines, I don't know why they don't turn them into digitals. I will never understand companies. Because to me, I feel like they've already made their money off of them, you know, charging you for the regular paper pads. So why not turn them into digitals? That's just my philosophy. But they probably never will. But um, these are great because you can pay a decent price and do that. Let me see here. <laughs> That's so funny, Joe. The If you guys are interested in anything that you see... That I have in digitals. Let me know. As long as I still have them in my purchases. Because I have the Etsy app on my phone. I can go right into where I purchased them. And I can share. So if you're interested in the mason jars. Let me get you the link. Anything you see I'll share. But there's only one. That for some reason. They were having issues with PayPal. This was when I did my goth, gothica, when I did my journal that was goth. I love that journal. Oh. But um, I still can't believe that came out of my brain. <laughs> but anyways, there's one on there that had a beautiful set of digitals. And for some reason, they, they just, they're this, they just shut, I don't know if they shut their store down or what they did. But every time I click on the link, it says... They had problems with PayPal and their stores closed. So that's the only one I can't share. Let me see here. That's not it. I'm a looking. Here it is. This particular set here with these, um, Christmas jars, I do try to heart the stores I follow too. So I didn't have that one hearted. Hold on. Um,
I'm not part of any design team or anything like that. I just, I'm a random buyer. I don't even know these people. I only paid a dollar 43, a dollar 43 people for these. That's what I'm saying. When you get a paper pad, you're talking anywhere from like 10 to 14 bucks where you can go get digitals and they're fun. This is by Lullabelle. Lulabell, maybe Lulabell Stationery is where I got this particular set. And here is uh, the link. So, what I said, you can really get stuff really cheap on here. So, this is the Etsy listing for these. And if you love the color blue as much as I do, there was a set on here I've shared several times. And I'm telling you, oh, you get a lot with this digital set. Let me find it real quick. It's called Blue Daisy by Digital Fit. And let me tell you, I mean, we're talking a lot you can scroll across the dots and see all the stuff you get with this and you only pay two dollars and 78 cents and i'm telling you it's a lot for that amount of money so you can go check these out here's a blue list it's called the it's a vintage daisy and it's just gorgeous. I have the pieces. I've used them many times. And it's just so cool. <laughs> Joe. And um, anything you see tonight, you just let me know. And what's nice about these mason jars is you can get one with all of them on one page. Or you can get the bigger set. So they have them in two different sizes. So you don't even have to size them. So I thought that was really cool. But like I said, you know, a lot of people don't like the digitals because they say stuff about it being one of a kind, but not everybody has the same vision on how we use stuff. Like I said, five different people can use the same digital kit, but that doesn't mean you're going to have five of the same types of journals because everybody has a different vision. That's what a lot of people don't understand. There was um, junk journal Danny that come in here the other night. The last live. Um, junk journals and more, I believe is her channel name. She uh, did a really pretty journal called Fireside. I really like it. And I was trying to figure out where she got her digital kit. And I typed in Fireside, but I couldn't find it. I even went under the Seneca Pond. Still couldn't find it. But I really like the digital set because she had little mason jars that were different than these. But she had stockings. And they were so stinking cute in that journal, but I couldn't find any. I was on Etsy for a really long time today. And I couldn't find that particular set because the stockings were like scenes. Like I didn't want to get just plain stockings. But it is what it is. Sometimes you can find stuff and sometimes you can't. Yeah, I have a playlist. But you know, I'm not here to get watch time. So it doesn't matter to me. I make playlists just so I can keep track of where my stuff is. But I tried to, to run a playlist before and I can't do it. <laughs> my problem is I want to see the content to comment. So I can't just run a playlist and that's it. Now I can give people watch time. 
Like I was helping uh, James's Gabe's wife, Samantha. I love, or Sam, I love watching her. She does like this turtle thing and stuff. And I'll put it on before I go to bed. And, but I know it's just turtles, like, and she games. But most of the time, if it's something like where they're talking or something, I want to comment, you know, give a genuine comment on what is being done. So I have a hard time running playlists for people. I'm too nibby. I want to watch. <laughs> I've never set up a premiere yet. But anyways, so what I got into here recently is I found these things. At first, I thought they were false because some of them are. But they have these apps out in Google Play where you can play games for money and they pay you. And it's really cool because... I had done a couple of them already, and I'm not a gamer people at all until COVID happened. Now I can't say I'm not a gamer because <laughs> that's all I do. But I am a puzzle, more of a puzzle type gamer. Like I like Tetras, and I don't know the ages in this room. But my first gaming console was the kid that I ever touched was an Atari. That's how old I am. <laughs> and it was a diamond-shaped Atari. One side had a wheel on it where you drove. You turned it around. You had tennis. And then you turned it around again. And you had this breakout game where you bounced the ball. And I like Tetris was like my favorite I love Tetris 3D, all that kind of stuff. Now, Candy Crush is eh, not one of my favorites, but it's okay. I'm more of a... I like Fish Dome. I like Tetras. I like stuff that's pretty, like real colorful. Um... My grandsons and my husband are all into the Xbox and yes, the PlayStations, but I don't care to shoot people. <laughs> so I'm not into those kind of games. I like watching them though. Like my husband played Resident Evil and I got to watch Sir Jacob the other day play the latest. I think it's like Resident Evil 7 or something. It was really cool watching it, but I'm not into those type of games but i used to like the first mario you know where you jumped up on blocks and you biffed his head off off blocks and you know you had to jump and do different things that was kind of cool but i'm just not much of that kind of gamer so anyways <laughs> so there was an app that you go into and there's just a whole bunch of them in the Google Play Store. Some I had and deleted. Like I'm in and out of them because I wanted to see which one's really paying. You'll see all these advertisements where people are throwing up like a bunch of bills. Like they make thousands of dollars. Now I don't I don't know about that, <laughs> but um I got into this one and I didn't play games. It's like a scratch off type thing. And I was kind of disappointed in it because you did all that work and you just watch ads like YouTube. Like I'm sick of watching ads people, but you got into it. And I think the first payoff was like $5 or something, but still, Hey, it's money. But you had to watch a bunch of different ads and it had like games you could download. But I wasn't, really wasn't interested in the game part. But it takes forever to earn money on this one app. But then they have a bunch of games like where they have bingo and all these different things. And of course it costs you. 
if you want to get into it like they start you off free and then all of a sudden you know they ask for money well i'm not paying for something if i want to make money off of it so but i'll show you one of them this is this is what lucky seven looks like or lucky money it's called but what they made me mad because right when i was about to earn a hundred dollars um this is what it looks like they sent me an email. I'm at $99. You can't see this real clear. It says $99.95 right there. I'm a freaking nickel away from $100. And they send me an email and said, oh, if you do a commercial saying you make all this money using our app, we'll pay you the extra, you know, the $100. I'm like, I'm not giving you false advertisement. It took me forever to get to that. And, then, and now by a nickel, you're holding it back, really, after all the time I gave you people. So over here, you have coins. And then, once you, no, they're not all the same, and no, they're not all scams filled. Uh, 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 that's what I'm getting to. Hey, Metro. Over here, you have coins. And then once you build these up, you get a payoff. I've made $65 off this app so far. So, but it takes a while. So what you do is you just rub your hands and then it gives you like certain coins. And then once this gets up to 3000, I can cash out. So this is one of them that I do. And that's all you do. And then a commercial will pop up after so many. They give you like so many free. And then you got to watch a commercial. But no, no, that's wrong. You're wrong, Field. This is my stream. Let me tell my story. But you're wrong. Because some of them do pay off. Don't come in here sprouting bullshit. I'll beat your butt. I get my granny paddle after you. So anyways, so I found another app. And you make you make cash faster. They're not all scams. But anyways, I'll stop on this one. Because I gotta give Metro a hug. <laughs> but there's some on here that you can make it faster. And um right now I'm in queue for a thousand one hundred dollars field, so you're wrong. They're not all scams. But we'll see when the queue's up on this one. The other one I've made, I started just a few days ago. Let me see how much the payout has been so far. I give things time, though, before I share them. This one here I've had... Hey, I try anything to see if it works first. Let's see my rewards. Hold on. I made, well, just playing around because I wanted to test it. I wanted to see if it would go through. So the very first time I made $1.92. The second time I made $3.39. And the third time I made $14.16. Then this new one... I'm in queue for 1100 but we'll see when, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm off queue if this goes through. Hey, do. Uh, no, Link, I'm not sharing with you because you doubt it. I don't think so, Field. The less people that know about it, the more money I make. Because this new one, this is a new one. And I'm testing. I'm a tester on this new one. And it even said, welcome and thanks for trying us out because we're new. I think you got to get to them first to get the cash. Heck no, I ain't sharing because the more people that get to it, then they'll take away from me. Hell with you. Find your own. 
I'm gonna be a greedy wench. <laughs> but anyways, they're not all fake. You just gotta find the one that belongs to you when you tape it in. Here's Metro's like. But I um I'm taking my time. And before I would ever share anyway, I have to make sure it works first because I don't like false advertisement. Here's Dill's leg. But yeah, I'm, I'm using the extra cash so that I can do giveaways and have fun shopping. I'm doing it for myself. <laughs> Because we need the extra cash just for me, for my little dalliances. But it's been interesting, to say the least. It has been. But I'll let you know when I'm off cue. Once it hits my PayPal. But yeah, $1,100. Heck yeah, that'll help me for Christmas. I still got Christmas shopping to do. I got um, my one granddaughter and my one grandson to buy for. I'm good on a good bit of people already. But I do have a pile of mail sitting outside my door that I haven't even opened yet. One of my friends was like, I would go nuts. I go, well, I can't because I do them as my sunny fun time mails and I open the mails and upload the videos that way if anything comes in broken it's in the videos that's why i do it the way i do it thank you metro i haven't had a sale in a while as a matter of fact i was going to plan one for november with my husband's help and it and it was going to be random because i actually have some christmas items that people could probably use if they were interested i bought i have some stuff in quantity i got from an auction and uh like hot wheels cars and all kinds of stuff but i've never done regular merchandise i've always done craft stuff but I thought I would have a variety sale just to see if anybody was interested in some stuff. But it's really hard when my husband only has one day off on the weekend. I feel like I'm married to a stranger. He's never home. He had, he works. This is what my husband's schedule's been. He's trying to kill himself. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, he's got to be dead. He's been working straight through two weeks with no days off. He works the third week and he gets one Saturday. Works straight through another week and then two more weeks and then a Saturday. I don't know how he's doing it. He's been complaining every night. I can't move. They call him Pap at work. Because <laughs> he's like one of the oldest people at his mill. I think it's hysterical. He took one guy under his wing he calls him his adopted son. So he's been teaching him his welding tricks. And it's really cool because the kid went to school. And he shares some new ways with my hubby. Where my hubby shares some old ways with him. So I think that's really cool. That he has somebody to teach and learn from. But he is a busy man. All his work has to be x rayed and signed for, and all that good. And they had a machine there that nobody else knew how to run but him, so he did that for a while. But he is busy. I just can't wait for him to have two days off so that I've been putting stuff aside to have a sale for, for people and. I like it when he helps me.
he gets to play moderator and he tapes under my name <sighs> so and then he complains the whole time <laughs> and you hear me telling him to be quiet because he does he complains the whole time he sells because he's like well we did one sale that ended up longer than what i thought when i did the quota state sale i thought i was going only going to have a one day sale it was a seven hour one day and a six hour another so yeah his butt was numb <laughs> and i said if you need a break take one yep i have six Nice, Metro. I'm glad. <laughs> Dill. What? What jokes? <laughs> Bigfoot. You're crazy. Well, normally I start shopping like right after Christmas Metro, but that's when I had a main job. I used to do, when I worked as an airbrush painter, I used to do all the Christmas presents for both sides of the family. My kids, they were already done and wrapped. I don't, I'm not a last minute shopper. I'm a planner. Um, with my husband being the main worker right now, it sucks because he is a last minute and he's not a planner. And that's where we can, we conflict because I like having stuff done and he doesn't, <laughs> he, he's the type that runs out on Christmas Eve and he wants to shop and it, that irritates me. I remember one Christmas, oh my gosh, I was so mad at him. I didn't even want to celebrate Christmas. I was just so fed up because he waited to Christmas Eve to shop. And you just can't do that with the size of family that we have. I remember sitting and wrapping gifts Christmas Eve, clear through noon, Christmas Day, and I still wasn't done. And believe me, that makes for a very enjoy. I did not enjoy Christmas that year. Christmas is one of my favorite holidays, and that was not a good year. There was lots of scrapping going on between me and him. I was really choking. But when he had the main bread, he was the main breadwinner. He wouldn't give me the money <laughs> until the Christmas Eve. I told him never again. I said, you do it again, and I'm canceling Christmas. So after that... He usually plans with me now. <laughs> pretty much, Mr. A. Pretty much. Is a figure of speech. I really wanted to get my greenie paddle up and fire his butt up that year for sure. So I told him never. I mean, believe me, it was I, I was having like a breakdown. It was bad. I, I was really upset. And I don't get that way often. It takes a lot for me to get to that point. But man. So he doesn't do it to me anymore. So I try to plan, I get everything done. And, and like when I worked, what was fun because, you know, we had Kmart and Hills and all those fun stores back in the day when the kids were little, it's stupid to wait at the end of the year for black Fridays and all this other stuff, because they would have red tag sales, like on Barbies and, you know, dolls for your girls and things through the year. So I would always shop. You know, monthly, I would just go walk it through the stores just to see what the sales are. Because even my daughter told me, my oldest daughter, she keeps track of like certain, you know, toys that her kids want. And she even told me the Black Friday is a ripoff in so many items. You would not believe it if you just paid attention to the prices. So she always has like a little list and she knows what her kids want. And she says, sometimes you get a get deal on Black Friday. Sometimes Cyber Monday is better. 
And sometimes they just jack up the prices and say they put them on sale and they're really not. It's all about the hype. You know, you got to pay attention to stuff. But she knows the prices for things. I like planning too. That's how I am. Hey, Jackie. Because you ever see them, those, you know, extreme couponers? <gasps> they really save some money. I tell you who was really good at that when I first came to YouTube that used to blow me away was, um, let me get her channel in here. Jackie's channel. Welcome, welcome. Um, crap. Nicole Burgess. I watched Nicole Burgess when I first come on here. And uh, she was an extreme couponer, buddy. She knew how to use the dollar apps and everything. And she was really good at saving money. She's into fitness right now. And she's doing really good on her channel. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, buddy. There's my sister from another mother. <laughs> Bonnie will tell you what a true junk journal is. Um... I don't do junk journals. I renamed my Bonnie. They're called crafty journals because I can use oldie and new. <laughs> Cutting up digitals. <laughs> you know, we were. I was just talking at the beginning of the stream. I gave the true definition of what a junk journal is. But I said, I don't understand why some of these paper lines, because like you, you can spend like $3 and get some really good digital kits. I don't understand why these paper lines don't turn into digital kits when they've sold so many of their pads. You know what I mean? Instead of retiring, if they would turn them into digitals, it'd be awesome. Uh-oh. A 12-yard junk, junk, junk paper roll. <laughs> That'll be interesting. I loved your your tea bag cover but what was funny um with you bonnie was hysterical because when i first come into the community i was trying to think of the you know what would grunge and i had thought about buying shoe polish but then i thought the smell though I didn't know how because shoe polish my dad used to use shoe polish and i'm thinking but the smell would be so strong and i didn't want my book to smell like chemicals and it was funny because then you came out with it later and i thought darn it i thought of it first <laughs> but you know how crafters get they're like that's my idea blah 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 but no i actually did think of shoe polish but then I, I just didn't, I didn't go get it because I was afraid of the smell. But when you did, it was so funny. I was like, oh my gosh, great minds think alike. But the tea bag was something. She really did an amazing cover. Our Miss Bonnie in here um, with tea bags. It was incredible. It was so dark. And see, that's like me. Like, I like my dyed papers, but some, you know, I want it to be where you can see the writing on them, but I wish they were darker. You know what I mean? Because because they do have writ dye that you can make papers dark, but then I don't want to be too dark that you can't see the writing. So I'm eh, in between. But tonight I hit up Etsy and, um, I found some really incredible digitals. So that's what I'm cutting up right now. 
Look how cute these ones are, ladies. Look at these. These are so cute. This one here is called the Sweet Treats. And it's tickets and gingerbread cookies and the gingerbread house. I think these are so adorable. I can't help it. I don't care. I like my digitals. So if anybody's interested in these ones, let me know because I can give you the link. I know it's like I was sharing the links earlier. Let me get the sweet treats up. But I like supporting my Etsy people. And I just think the digitals are so stinking cute. Sometimes the digitals to me are as cute as the paper pads. You know? Let me get the gingerbread kit up here. It's called Christmas Treat Sweets. And these are all different people. I don't know. I don't know who owns these stores. I just randomly Google. Let me get the. This is the sweet treats. These were only $3.61. Like I said, you can go through and pick up some and you get a whole bunch of digitals for what a paper pad costs. So here are the gingerbread ones. You can go check them out yourself. It's got the little scroll to go across. And you can look at them. Go for it, people. That's all I'm doing is cutting. So you can go check them out and come back and chat. But yeah, I love digitals. And I only pick out things that resonate with me. You know, things that I'm into. Like, I love hot chocolate and gingerbread cookies. So, these were perfect. And once you own them, you save them on external hard drives. And you will always have them. You know, you don't got to rebuy them. You buy them one time, you can print them off as many times as you want. And I don't feel like any of these would ever go out of fashion. I tell you another um, website that I really, really like is I love Calico Prints. Now, I did hear that some people knew that person on here. I don't know. I don't know most of these people. I know some people have YouTube channels and some don't, but. I just, I'm a random picker when it comes to stuff. But I really love this sweet treats. I think this is so cute. I have an external hard drive with all my digitals. And I pray it never closes. I have like five external hard drives. <laughs> but I hope they never break. Because that happened to my daughter. She had a bunch of pictures stored of her kids. And she couldn't get in it. She said she kept getting this click, click, click sound. I said, oh God, that would be awful. So I always store my stuff on um, two separate external hard drives. So I never lose them. So that's what I'm doing is cut, cut, cutting tonight. And then I have my crop -a if I want to make, or you could do a hole punch or whichever to do your little punches in the tag. So I'm cussy cutting. That's what I'm doing on my channel tonight. I'm cussy cutting digitals. Getting my ephemera ready. For the next journal that I will be creating. Which will be Christmas. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Is the ephemera. And then when I get these cut up. I'll set them aside. I got to pick out the book. That I'm going to be tearing apart. And then I'm going to be teaching y'all. How to do a journal. 
make your own homemade journal. Um, it was requested from a friend of mine, Stream Maria. I hope she comes and watches or watches on a later time because I'm doing it because she requested it. And the last two journals I made are sitting right beside me. These are the ones that people have been here seeing. These were the, my last Paris journals that I made. Here was one. And here's the one I'm keeping. This one will be up for sale eventually. And it's got little charms and lace. My dyed papers. And this was a lot of fun to create. So now I'll be doing a Christmas one so people can see. And I put part one. Until they're done. And then in the month of December, this is my announcement. If you love the military, I take the month of December because it's around Christmas and it's family. And I dedicate December Wednesdays to nothing but military for now. So last year, I was fortunate enough to follow some people who buy out lockers and I inherited a whole bunch of World War II letters between Elsie and William. They're my favorite couple and it was before they were married and after they were married and it's all of the letters that I got that was from him to her and they are incredible and I started reading them Wednesday nights last December and people fell in love with this couple as much as I have. So I will be continuing because I have lots. So this December, every Wednesday, it'll be a continuing story. And it's during World War II. He was in the Navy. Uh, there's another friend involved and a female friend and a male friend that were also a couple who all wrote with each other. And so far, I've only had one picture pop up. I would love to have a picture of Elsie and William, but I only have a picture of their one friend. And the letters are incredible. Like, I just can't even describe this couple. And just the way they talked back then to talk now. There was so much respect and courtesy. They are amazing letters. And he cracks me up because he reminds me of my husband, John, stick people. <laughs> His stick people are hysterical. And he's always making up funny poems. It's, they're just, it's an incredible set of letters. That's all I can say. And there's a bunch more to go. So it's going to be fun. So that's what my Wednesdays will be, is his, their letters. <laughs> hey, Schmidt. Thank you, Bonnie. I didn't know you were on YouTube. Let me get your channel out there. This is another couple from Whatnot. Cool beans. Let me get your channel, Schmidt's channel. So yeah, I love it when I find military stuff. And um, Brett sold um, the Schmidt's channel. He sold war ration books from World War II. So I bought a ration book off of him. I love stuff to do with military. So um, there's Schmidt auctions. I have met some of the funnest people on Whatnot. I'm telling you, if you do not go to whatnot.com or have the Whatnot app on your phone, you are missing out. You don't have to shop if you don't want to, but you meet some fun people in there. Super Mod Schmidt. <laughs> I actually mod on whatnot for auctioneer. <laughs> the guy that come in here under Brett, I I actually mod on his stream. 
Um, another favorite is Penguin Boss. If you watch my Sunny Fun Time mails, this is how she spells her channel name on whatnot. Look these people up. I'm telling you, we have a blast hanging on Penguin Boss. They are so funny. Um, Tracy and Printy Corn. <laughs> We have so much fun over there. I've been having more fun on whatnot than YouTube lately. <laughs> I mean, not being knocking my YouTube buddies, but I'm just telling you, it's a lot of fun. They're live auction streams, and it's not like over here on YouTube. It's it's a little different because it's quick. Like you sign up, you have to show your license and pictures only if you're shopping. That is. They want identity because it's immediate payout. There's no invoicing. It automatically goes straight to my PayPal and I'll hear wait, my phone goes off and it's, it's separate in your email, but it's, it's just awesome. And you meet some fun people. We goof off. We talk. Um, some people it's all business, but then there are some people that are like, you know, penguin boss or we can goof off with them and stuff. And auctioneer, we pick on him too. Glitter that comes in here under Glitterbug. She comes on Brett's channel and they'll do like a split screen. And oh my gosh, she's a riot. But you meet some really fun people. And Schmidt, somebody who I just met, I went into their auction. I haven't bought nothing yet because I've been kind of being frugal here lately. Because <laughs> we had to buy a new refrigerator and microwave and my dishwasher's coming because all of our appliances decided to flip us the bird <laughs> at once. So, you know how that goes. The end of the year, tax time. Seems like all the appliances gang up on a person. So, I haven't been shopping as much. I've been kind of taking a little break. I only buy as needed. Like my husband told me, if you got to have it, you got to have it. But if you don't, don't. Because we're trying to stay thrifty. Plus, we're trying to get Christmas. And build our pantry and all that good stuff. So, it's been busy. And Kidlet, I like her channel too. Kidlet Corner. Uh... If you're looking for, like, brooches to top your tassels for your journals and things like that, they have some really cool stuff. Thrifty Treasures, she was in here one night. She's a YouTuber and on whatnot. She has fun stuff, too. Sometimes you can get stuff reasonable over there. You would not believe how cheap some of the prices are of some people. And then there's a David that sells nothing but postcards. And I'm telling you, he's got some good postcards. He does them to where they're from the 1800s. Some are state to state. Um, some are different countries. Like he really sets his out and separates them and does flip throughs like, one set I got off of him was covered bridges. Amazing. Just really amazing stuff. Everything from vintage to newer to coins, Funkos, t-shirts, everything you can imagine they sell on whatnot. It's a lot of fun. Sometimes you get some big spenders. Sometimes you get some cheapy spenders. It's just fun. Brett was really lucky in his stream the other night. We were up late, and this guy came in, and he was going through the cash. He was so nice. He told Brett, he says, I'm going to buy you a computer chair and just throw $135 at him for nothing. Just, just, it was just incredible to see somebody do something that sweet. Because Brett and his wife, you know, they're like me and my hubby, paycheck to paycheck. So it was really cool to see a tipper come into a stream.
So sometimes you get some really incredible people. But I don't care to be monetized on YouTube. I'm to the point that I feel that if somebody wants to tip my channel, everything's in my about section. I have a cash app. I have a PayPal. I've had people tip my channel if they want to. But I'm not going for monetization on YouTube. Um, I've done cash prizes for people. Like I had somebody tip my channel $50 one time. And um, I used the money on YouTube to do a giveaway. So you you just never know what kind of people is going to cross your path. That was amazing, Brett. I was over there going, oh my God, don't lose it, Brett. Because <laughs> I thought you were going to start stuttering there for a minute. Because it is shocking at how kind some people can really be on here. It really is. When my husband hurt his hand, the crafting community was amazing. Um, they did a gave like a fundraiser and they sent money to help us get to the point till he got his comp kicked in because he worked out of state. So instead of getting his in two weeks like normal, it took three weeks and he was worried about because we were paycheck to paycheck and he was like what are we going to do for groceries? And what are we going to do for gas for me to get my doctor's appointment? And the crafting community raised money for us. And it was really, really nice. And then later, you know, people that I knew that had Etsy stores and things like that or had sales, I reimbursed them. Like I went in and shopped at their Etsy or I went to their live sales and stuff like that. But they helped us out at a good time, at a hard, you know, through a rough time. And I like helping people out. As long as I know they're legit and they're not scammers, we're good. I always do my homework <laughs> because you do have to watch scammers on here too. Because there have been a few. It was kind, Sharice. It really was. So you can, you know, find good people on here. But that's like me too. I'm picky on who I help. I take my time and stuff like that because I have seen a lot of scamming go on on here. There's been quite a few people busted out. So you better know who you're helping. You know, just like my old Sunday school teacher told me. Even if you find out you're scammed, it's okay. Because her, her philosophy is this. Your intention was good. No matter who you help and what you do, your intention's good. What that person does with it, if they're fake or not, it's on them. And I, I've always remembered her telling me that. And I'm like, yep, that's a good philosophy. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Mrs. A was probably, woohoo. Heck, I was shocked. <laughs> but it does happen, Brett. It does. I mean, I've sat in streams here on YouTube. And, you know, people that are monetized, I've seen people come in. I, I actually saw another YouTuber who was always live and you would see him in his chair. Remember I was telling you that I, I seen that happen before his chair was shoddy and squeaky and it was just awful. And he had a friend in his stream and he just came out one day and told him he wanted his address so he gave him his address and the next thing you know he did an unboxing on his video of his brand new computer chair and it was the link i sent you did you look at the link i sent you on um instagram it's it i guess it's called a gamer chair and they have red and black blue and black i don't know like different colors 
but the one guy on YouTube got the red and black one, but he was so floored that this guy sent him a chair, but he did. He bought him a computer chair. I thought that was so nice. And one time I had a live sale and I told everybody I was freaking out because I just signed up. I think it was like right after I signed up for instinct or right before. And I was thinking, I can't remember. It's been a while, but my printer wouldn't work. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I've got to save money for a new printer. So that's what I did. I had a sale on here. And all the proceeds went into a new printer and everybody that came in and shopped. It was so nice to have a live sale and they know that money went into a new printer. So, yep, my YouTube buddies bought crafting stuff off of me and it helped me get a printer. And I thought that was so nice. But that's a nice, you know, a fun kind of incentive too. You know, as if you have a sale and you tell people, you know, I'm selling these items to raise money for this. It's not like they're just giving you money. They're actually getting something in return because they're buying something off of you. And those kind of giveaways are fun, too. That's just like one of my favorite um, sales I like to support here on YouTube for people that don't know this exists it's called defy and i'll get you the link and there's a youtuber's channel on here let me get the link so you can see here's the original link I know we know a lot of people in the crafting community behind this and it's really cool. And if you know anybody that's struggling, that's on disability or anything like that, this is like perfect. What Defy does, it's called disabledartist.org. Care Heart started it and now she's got a bunch of people helping her. And here's Care Heart's channel on YouTube. 100% of the money that they make, it's the second Saturday every month, goes into paying shipping for the hardest that they have. Here's CARES Channel. Um, it pays for, like, say, say you're a hardest and you sign up, you have to prove that your income is a certain level. And then once you do that and it meets the requirements, you say like, uh, I like painting or you like pottery or you like junk journaling, whatever you're, whatever you're into, they give you free supplies once a month. And it is such a cool foundation. And a lot of crafters you'll see pull together the second Saturday every month, we're all in that stream and we're buying stuff from the auction to pay for the hardest to get their supplies. And it's all, it's really cool. They make the um, hardest themselves will make artist trading cards and you get them if you sponsor shipping. Like they'll have like number five in the auction is always shipping sponsorship. And it's $8. And you can just say how many times like you'll see people put me times 10 or me times two or me times however many you want to sponsor. It's $8 a piece for shipping. And they have a certain size bag that they fill with stuff. But you fill out a card when you join in and things. And then they have raffles. It's just a really good time. And you see a lot of the stuff that the crafting community is into. And um, I love it. I've been a part of Defy since pretty close to the beginning when it started. And I love it. I think it's one of the most amazing auctions we have here on YouTube. And they do different things at different times. Like you might have a month where it's all journals or a month that it's 
um, like ephemera or like, I don't know. It's just such a mixture of things. And plus you get ideas off of people, you know, and crafting ideas and stuff. So it's definitely something to check out if you get the chance. Um, and you want to help others. So that's my, so I tell my husband, that's my tithing. Because <laughs> I love, I love the organization. I know care herself. And I just think it was an incredible idea because they got feedback from a lot of people, you know, who are disabled. And they just told him it's very uplifting to be able to have something that you can do. You know, because some people have limited disabilities. They might be able to use some things and not other things. Like, some can't squeeze tools, so they find another type of crafting form. But it, it keeps them to where, I don't know, it's just, you know, that uplifting thing of having something to do as a hobby. And I love it. I think it was a great idea because I know I, when I'm in the hospital and I have surgery and stuff like that, I always took word searches. <laughs> like, you know, it's hard to find a craft when you're in the hospital or read a book or something, you know? So I thought it was cute that she come up with this idea, but it's totally a nonprofit organization. And they also had, I believe there was another group of, disabled kids that joined they merged and with theirs and then one year they had um a company reach out to them where some of the hardest could design things that went into a gallery of a legit business tell me that's not fun and some of the hardest themselves they will get supplies and then they make things to make to help with the fundraisers which i thought that was cute too i just really like the cause and you can de-stash or if you know somebody that wants to get rid of crafting supplies like paint brushes and things, you know, things that's within reason, not dent, not roll damage, but some people have de-stashed and sent stuff to them too. Like they had a business donate like a, a bunch of jewelry to do the fundraisers with and things, or they could, it's just, I don't know. It's just an incredible, you just have to go to see it because there's so many ideas. And I'll, I'll be even, you know, you never learn everything about a hobby, but I'll be sitting in there sometimes. And some of these ladies do things I've never even heard of, like felting. I never heard of felting. And that's what I love about going to the sales too, the auction, because you'll see crafts you've never heard of. And it's like, what the heck is felting? And I bid on this really cute snail that a lady made felting. And I guess it's something that's really time consuming. Like it's a real time consuming art, but boy, is it cute. I have it downstairs sitting by my other laptop. One of these days I'll make it back down there. <laughs> that's usually where I do my filming, but we had a bit of a spider problem. <laughs> so I came up here for a while, but I do miss my horse mat. And this pig coming in here telling me to draw wings on my horse because he likes Pegasus. <laughs> but my other mat downstairs has a horse on it. That's how you can always tell that I'm down there. And the camera's better too. It's more clear. I actually went down there earlier just to print these things off, but... I like crafting up here because all my stuff is beside me. I moved everything up here. I'm using the downstairs like a storage room. A 
love these tickets. These tickets are so cute. But if I want to show stuff up close, this it's the same camera I have on both computers, but I don't know why this one up here does not want to go in focus. Or my one downstairs focuses really well. Those tags are so cute. Cussy cutting, cussy cutting. I love these um, for scissors because there's no restraint of, you know, how you have the little hoops on scissors, like the little loops right there. I think these are amazing. Marianne from Happy Paper People told me she swore by these and me being a left-hander I have such a heck of a time because I hate left-hander scissors I learned how to cut with right hand scissors heck I didn't even know there was a difference and all I know is when I found these we are memory keepers I just love these things I think I own like three pairs of them now I have one in every room <laughs> Because they are incredible to fussy cut, cussy cut with. They're awesome. I never even heard of the word fussy cut my entire life till YouTube either. There's lots of things. I never heard of Funko Pops either till I came to YouTube. Like, what the heck is a Funko Pop? And this Rebel girl, <laughs> she has Rebel in her name. I think I shared her link out one of my lives. She says, you don't own a Funko. That's just a sin. So she sent me my first Funko. Oh my gosh, and it's so cute. She sent me the grumpy Care Bear. And I said, hubby, look, I found a Funko that acts like you. <laughs> he goes, you're not even funny. I said, yes, sir, it's grumpy. I got grumpy bear. So since then, I own a few Funkos. Not a whole lot like some of these collectors, but I do have a few that are really cute. But these are really adorable. Look at these little words. Oh, that's another set that I got too. Um, of digitals that are really cute. From Calico Creations. If you're going to work on a Christmas journal... She... Calico Creations did a uh, dictionary words on Christmas words and definitions. And I have those too. That I'll share the digital link to. Because I'll show you what they look like here in a second. Get this little cussy cutting piece done but this is I love these because I can get to all the little corners and not worry about cutting them up I can't do this with a normal pair of scissors that's why I swear by these memory keepers they're amazing my opinion and my review is these are great for cussy cutting and here are the words Look how cute these are. And they're already grunged. Christmas, Angel, Jesus, Manger, December, Bethlehem. She did. There's three pages. And they have little ones. 
poinsettia nutcracker rejoice this is so cute so i'll share that next Dill. <laughs> That's too funny. So let me get back to my Etsy and I will share the link to Calico Creations. Calico Collage is how is her their name. Christmas dictionary words. Here. And I will copy this and paste it. Dual Tide Dog. It's got all kinds of good words. And here's her Etsy listing. Now she's been around for a while. Her prices are $4.50. They're a little bit more expensive. But she's got great stuff. She's the only one that I could find in Etsy that had the most beautiful horses and i do have those downstairs she had uh christmas horses in her digitals and believe me i jumped on them but uh, these are stores that if you have etsy hard them save them go check them out because they do got some good stuff Now, My Porch Prince is another one. I think there's people on YouTube that know her. Um, I don't know her, but I have some of her Valentine stuff. It's really cute. I just Google, well, I should say Google into Etsy what I'm looking for. Because there's a lot of Christmas kits in there. But then I scroll over and see what suits me before I buy them. Like, I have to like a lot. It's kind of like me with a paper pad. When I go to pick out one, um, you know, like if you're in Joann's or Hobby Lobby or someplace, I always flip through and look at the designs on the pages because if I don't like over half of the pad, I'm not going to buy it. I'm a, I window shop a lot. Just taking in. Sometimes I'll type in, you know, Etsy when I'm on the computer because I don't have the app. And I just hit in homemade junk journals or junk journals. You get the ephemera, you get the journals and everything. And I just window shop. I scroll down and look and see what journals the people have made and ephemera to go in them and it's just really cool to just sit there and window shop sometimes but i own a lot of journals that i've seen people who make on here I bought one off a rebookery that I haven't even started in yet. That was a real nice one. Very vintagey. And it's quilt, it's got quilt stuff on it. It's just really pretty. A lot of room to expand. Her stuff's expensive though. So I only bought one that was a Christmas present to myself one year. But I have a bookshelf downstairs of all my journals. And holiday ones, how I do them. I've mentioned it before, but there's some new people. Some people are like, oh, I don't make holiday journals. I'm like, why not? The whole month of October. I didn't do it this year, though. Um, I'll buy a Halloween one just for the month of October. And I buy a Christmas one just for the month of December. And it's like a countdown into everything that happens the month of December. And then at the end, I go back 
and I'll do pictures of my grandkids and stuff and then put it into the journal. And every at the end of every year, I've showed the journals I've used the year before. So people kind of get an idea. And then Valentine's journals, I usually use just for the month of February. But I like holiday journals. I think they're cool. I haven't seen Peg around lately. How's he been? I haven't seen him pop in here in a while. I try to visit sometimes when I can. I'm behind in my community commenters. I got to catch up. It's going to take me a little while. But I do try to in my free time. Catch up with people. I was in a live stream on a panel here the other night. It was a really good topic. Ty said what Ty said. I was on her live. We had a really nice talk. I'm so proud of her. I don't know how she's going to represent her silver play button but she should be getting it she hit her hundred thousand subscribers and i'm so happy for her she deserves it I was with Locker Nuts when they hit their 100K too. It's so cool. They get excited and nervous. I think you get what a silver play button when you hit your 100k and you get a gold play button I think when you hit your million or something like that I think it's cool when you see channels take off hey Penny Penny is our Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm cheap, though. All my Stampin' Up! came from eBay. <gasps> or live sales where they've been discontinued. And I had one Penny nose. Oh, my goodness, did I go on a search for that thing. That farm one, I love it. Thank you, Penny. Right now I'm cussy cutting Penny. Cussy cutting some digital ephemera. I'm getting ready to start on a new journal. And I had a lady. I hope she's the one that wanted me to start a journal from scratch. Maria, I hope she gets to see the videos. Because I'm starting a new journal just so that she could see a step by step. But tonight I'm working on the hardest part. The ephemera. So I went today on Etsy and I got some really cute digital kits. That 
that I'm going to be including some of the pieces to. So I'm pretty excited. So I'm just cussy cutting tonight. Getting the ephemera ready and then um I'm gonna have to probably coffee dye or tea, tea dye some pages too because I think I'm running out. I'm starting to run low on my dyed pages, so These jars are so cute. Oh, I know. Me too. It's like I was saying earlier, some people, I even enjoy Halloween journals, even if I don't celebrate Halloween. But um, I like the colors. But what I do is some people don't like making the holiday ones. But I do because, like I said, I use... Halloween just for the month of October and then I use Christmas just for the month of Christmas but I look for specific handheld tape journals not like real bulky ones just to last that month and it's funny because <laughs> if somebody goes to read my journal someday it's going to be hysterical because I'll have one that's bigger and then I'll put to be continued because I'm getting ready to start my Valentine's Day journal for the month of February or whatever. You know what I mean? And then if I'm not done with it, then I go through the whole Valentine's Day journal and then I come back to the spot that I left off in the journal before. <laughs> so I'm going to have people all over the place trying to read my journals. <laughs> that's what makes it fun, though. But my Christmas journal, I really love the one I did last year. I found it on Etsy. Some lady had them. They were really nice. She only sold them for $26. You don't have to, you know, spend a bunch. But um, this journal was so stinking cute because she had the numbers as extra. So, like, when I did the date, I put, you know... I glued the number in for the numbers that she left for like the countdown to Christmas. Oh my gosh, it was adorable. And when I was done, like in between, I left some fancy pages that I didn't want to write over, but I used them for my grandkids as Christmas pictures. That's where I ended up gluing them in. And the journal turned out really cute. But Because I, I think people should see how we utilize them, too. You know, I don't want to just buy a journal and just sit and stare at it. And I think it's cool if somebody gets one of my journals. I don't care if it's in a giveaway or if they buy one or how they get it. I love seeing how people make it theirs, like how they utilize it. I think it's fun. Because I don't care if people change, you know, some things I've done in it. That's the whole thing. Is once the buyer buys it, they make it theirs. And I think it's really cool to see it if you have somebody that will show you. So I do, at the end of every year, I show all the journals I've used, how I've utilized them. And hopefully it gives tips to people. 
And two, like if you're a busy mom or you have a busy life, you don't have to make it like a whole bunch of pages. I like watching Stacy Belts and how she does hers. And I like watching Deidre. And what they do, excuse me, because they're busy moms, they do a journal and they'll do like a page. Like they'll put like just a page with some lines and they do just that day. Like we went to the park and they put pictures in or something like that. Because when you, you know, when your kids are little, it's hard to take the time to journal real long, but it's really cool to see different people's ideas to, you know, to cut corners and be maybe like a fast journaler or a, a long journaler. Oh, I was just talking about you, Ty. Was your ears burning? <laughs> There's Ty. Good James. Hey, James. So, Ty. My question to you is, are you going to do something really cool with your silver play button? Did you get it yet? Or are you waiting for it? And are you going to do something special? You going to have like a celebration stream? And if you are not on Ty's channel, you better get over there. Because she's got some good stuff. She's got some great lives. Let's put Ty's channel in here. Yes, I was bragging up on you. You did. That is so cool. Did you do a video or anything about it yet? You're welcome, James. And we will put James's stream in here too. This is James's channel. <laughs> Treasure Books did a cute display of hers. And um, I remember when Locker Nuts got theirs too. Aw, that's awesome. That sounds like fun. Yeah, you shouldn't have to plan it. <laughs> Everybody should plan it that follows a channel. They should plan a celebration party. I feel awful that people that get their play button have to plan their own celebrations. Oh, you don't have to go live, James. I have friends that come in to just support. I have friends that just do videos. We're from all walks of life on here, so it's all good. I even share the links of people that just support because notifications. You know, when you follow people and they follow you back, the notifications come up better when you're subscribed to them. Because I have a lot of people that follow my channel and come visit me that don't have channels. And stuff like that. Which is good. You know. Because one thing about it is a YouTuber. I will share a secret. This is my secret. Is. The bigger your channel grows. The harder it is. Especially if you got a busy life. To go visit everybody. So sometimes it's good to have people that follow you that don't have any channels because then you don't got to worry about having to give them watch time back. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Especially when you follow gamers and stuff and they have like four hour long lives. It's like really people. I might not be able to give them full watch time in one day, but what I do is Everything goes under my liked videos. So I'll do like an hour one day while I'm doing laundry. And then I'll watch some shorter videoed people. And then I'll do an hour the next day. I end up giving them the full watch time. But it might take me four days to get there. 
especially if I know they're trying to get monetized or if they're monetized, I do try to support my community as best I can. But I'm telling you, it's a juggle. I don't know how these people in the millions do it. I'm like a tiny channel and I have a hard time visiting people, but I do try. Because, you know, I got a great community, I think. I like the people that come visit. Except Dill. We have to watch Dill Hole. <laughs> he tortures spiders. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have to ride Dill because I think he's funny. He definitely has original content. <laughs> he was trying to feed a little fish to a spider. I'm like, what the, what the hell are you doing? And he, he has the, the little fish uh, to the spider web and he went to get, see if the spider would come after the fish and he dropped the fish on the ground. I'm like, what? <laughs> You're so mean to that little fish. Oh my gosh. It's hysterical. He's so funny though. Dill is, he is comical, but I have to torture him. But I can't do playlist mystery because if I did playlist and I wouldn't be able to comment. I like commenting because commenting and interaction is very important on YouTube. Especially with people who are monetized. Did I get you Penny? Did I put Penny's channel in there? No, I did not. Let me get Penny's channel. I think I got everybody so far. Oh, I know. Dill's, he's a riot. He cracks me up. Here's Penny's channel. But, you know, that's one thing that I love about what Ty does is, um, and, and believe me, Ty, there's not a lot of people that do this because I can give some good examples. Um, sometimes, and I'm not saying all people who have the join button, so do not take this wrong, but I have noticed that there are some channels that once they get that join button, like there was there, like, I'll give you a good example. There was a guy, this isn't to trash people, but this is just saying you got people who use people as stepping stones and then you got your real people. Ty is one of the real people. She's like me. That's why I like her. Um, as far as how we feel about what YouTube should be about. But this one guy I was following. He started his channel and he barely had anybody. Well, he would ask you, bring your friends. Subscribe to my channel and do all this. Now, this, this guy was into music. And so their friends brought their friends and so forth. He made everybody a mod. And then when he got to a point where he got his join button. These are kind of people I don't like, by the way. He took everybody's mod away. And he only kept the people that joined his channel as moderators. And he only favored those people. And I'm like, really? All these other people helped you get where you are. And you just took their moderators away because you only want the ones that pay you. I just can't. I can't. And I love Ty's speech because on her channel, this is what she says. She knows that there's people out there having hard times. And that's what makes her a great channel. She will tell you, if you can't join me, that's okay. If you share me out, you comment, and you even do the things that help a person build a channel. Everything is appreciated. That's how you know when you're following a good channel. And that means, because everything means something. You know, if you can't afford to do it, there's other things you can do to support a channel. And I truly believe that. And, and, and I love it that she stays grounded. And that's one of the things that I loved about being a part of her channel because that's what makes a good 
Yes. And that we talk about these kind of things and it's just sad because, you know, and then once he grew, he like ignored everybody. It was like, what? And then you have people that don't. And that's what makes a good channel. It really, truly does. And don't ever get offended if you do join a bigger channel and they don't know that you're there because once you join a channel in the millions, it's really hard for them to acknowledge everybody. And I do believe that, you know, I don't get offended. Like, I like Mr. Ballin. If you don't know who Mr. Ballin is, he talks about true crime. I love his channel. He was a former Navy SEAL. And he is so good at storytelling. But I don't get offended if I don't ever hear from him because, my goodness, he's in the millions. <laughs> I didn't know him when he was in his beginnings, you know. But I love his channel. If you don't know who Mr. Ballin is, you got to check him out. He does the, the strange and mysterious. And he's also starting a podcast. And he's just, he was, um, I forget if he was in Afghanistan. I don't know, but he was by an explosion. It tells his story and then there's his family and stuff that you can look up through Google. But he almost got killed in the military and he decided to start a YouTube channel and he's a storyteller. And I'm telling you, his channel is incredible. He's at 6.85 million subscribers now. So yeah, hey, I'm a blip to people like that but you know what i mean but when you but when you've been with the channel and you've watched them grow it's nice when they stay in touch with you if they don't all the time that's okay because you know their life is busy but here's mr Bowen's channel and i even had a couple people come in and say and i'm and, and i'm not saying it's just the bigger channels either some of the little channels can be very selfish too because I ran into a YouTuber once who was a smaller channel starting out. And she was like, well, I'm not going to follow the bigger channels because they already have enough people. I'm like, what the heck kind of thinking is that? <laughs> because you should, you should be on here watching what you like to watch as far as content. It shouldn't always matter about the numbers. <laughs> But I thought that was like so very narrow-minded way of thinking. I mean, I follow people from little to big. I don't care. I mean, as long as they got good content and it's content I'm interested in, who the heck cares? But I thought that was kind of snobby of her. She was just like, well, I'm not following them unless, you know, they're little and they're following me. And it's like, whatever that's the case i would never hear any good music because <laughs> i'm always following musicians that i like <laughs> do you still do your game they are weird i, I agree die you ever still do your game ty she used to do a fun game on her channel on sunday fun day where she would have us go look up a song and and she would say like and so and so like michael jackson's video if there's a clock on the wall ty would say what what does what the time does the clock say and we would be like rushing and trying to find the answer she even let us cheat <laughs> she said we could even use the device to look it up and the first so many people that come back, she would make a list and she did fun giveaways. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. I used to love watching people do it and I would just guess and put something crazy in there. <laughs> I think it's funny, Ty, when people think you're a moderator that you have all the right answers and I would just put crap in there. And then people would say the same thing. It's like, I didn't even look it up. <laughs> Or she would have, like, what color outfit did this person come on? Most of the time, I didn't even look it up. Because I would get almost half the answers wrong, but it was fun. <laughs> I still have my Sunday Funday mug, too. 
She had mugs that she did that had Sunday fun days on them. We have a fun and tie stream. You guys don't even know the fun we used to have. Whether we win giveaways or not, it's still fun to play. <laughs> I enjoyed those. I enjoyed those games. Those were fun. Watching everybody squirming, trying to rush to go get the answers. <laughs> That's a great interaction. I thought about doing a game, but I couldn't think of anything that was. As fun and interacting as that one, because that was fun. Fun, fun times. I know there are some people that do bingo nights on here. And some people do like to play games. I can't remember whose stream I was in. She was from the Philippines. Where she would ask questions. And people would have to finish. I forget what the game was. It was something different though. Where she would start something and you would have to add a word at the end. And oh my gosh, it was absolutely hysterical. First, I was so lost. I was like, what the heck is she doing? <laughs> but then once you got into it, it was really funny seeing the answers that people come up with. You take care, John. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> I'm the hug ho on Ty's stream. I still love my t shirt. I wear my t shirt. She got me a t shirt that says hug dealer. <laughs> it's so cute. How's your doggies doing, Ty? She's got two cute, cute puppies. They're so cute. I say they're going to stay puppies for the rest of my life. My dog was so funny the other night. I was talking to my friend Sandy. And my dog was laying on my lap. And every time I send her a voice clip through Facebook Messenger, you would hear my dog snoring. <laughs> She's like, what? I said, that's my dog. I swear to goodness, she has a dog purr, too. She makes this real funny rumbling noise every time you pet her. When she first gets in your nap, lap it. Um, my dog's absolutely hysterical because she still thinks she's a puppy. And she wait. Oh, there's Sandy. Sandy will tell you. I can't believe you're still up, woman. She's 70 pounds and she thinks she's a puppy and she squishes me. But when I was sending Sandy voice messages last night, Rainy was snoring. <laughs> she was snoring at her. Even Sandy was laughing. Huh, Sandy? Hearing Rainy snore. <laughs> Take care, Sandy. That's my sassy Sandy. <laughs> oh, my dog's been through a lot here lately. Let me tell you what, people. If you ever have a dog, be careful what dog food you feed them. There's CDC. There's my other troublemaker. <laughs> you staying out of trouble? 
Are you being a good boy? But anyway, we had our dog on, you know, you type in Google some of the top of the line dog fizz. I'm telling you, you can't even rely on Google sometimes because it lies. <sighs> when she was on, I would give Purina one good point. Purina puppy chow is not bad. Every dog I ever had went on the puppy chow and they did fine. It's when they get to the adult food, they're awful. Somebody calls them the McDonald's of dog food and I believe it. So we taped in a whole bunch of dog foods and we were trying to find the right one to put her on and it was like a nightmare. So we had her on Purina 1 and she always seemed like she had issues. So we took her off of it and we tried her on the dry blue buffalo. That lasted for like three days and she snubbed her nose at it. <laughs> So my husband decided to get her the can of uh, blue buffalo. And the next thing we know, the poor dog is running to the door panting. Like she, for, first she started out like on my lap panting. And I'm thinking, why is she panting? This is before she started going towards the door, that is. She kept staring at me. She would come and put her head on the bottom of my recliner and she would be like, like she wanted up on my chair. So I would tell her to get up and she started this pant. And so I started Googling information like, why does your dog pant when they have any, you know, like where they're in air conditioning or in front of a fan and they haven't even had a workout and I was getting nothing. Well, here she was trying to tell me the poor thing that she had to go to the bathroom. So we had her tested. It started out, she had a UTI infection and we didn't know it. So we took her in for something else because I had her blood work done just to make sure it wasn't something serious because her mother died of cancer. Come to find out she was, she was in the beginnings of UTI. So that was her panting to let me know she had to go to the bathroom. Because she don't go to the door. Hey, Lori. So, so then she had the runs. And I'm talking so bad, guys. I was worn out. So that's why I was missing. I wasn't posting anything for a while. If anybody hadn't noticed <laughs> there for a little while, it was bad. I'm talking like she was running to the door and running around just with straight runs every 15 minutes, two times, like two times in 15 minutes, this dog had me outside. So I was sleeping on the couch to be able to take her out to go to the bathroom because my husband would come home and he would get up with her a couple times to spend time with her. And he couldn't do it because I told him there's no way you need to sleep for work. So I'll sleep in the living room with her and take care of her. So we had to go to the vet. We had to have her put on a specific medicine because it was, it was bad. Time. It was really bad. I will never give my dog Purina or Blue Buffalo ever again. So I was like at the end of my rope because I'm like pulling up every dog food imaginable and reading the ingredients. And I was actually buying chicken and just fixing her a homemade meal because I didn't know what to trust. Because, you know, you have all these different things fighting for first place in your Google stream telling you this is the top dog food this is the top dog food blah 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 and it's it's just paid for advertising spots it's not that they were good foods so i found this girl and let me tell you she was a blessing 
I don't even know how I found her channel. I just know I was exhausted. <laughs> and I didn't search this on YouTube. It just must have come up because you know how sometimes you get suggestions once you've Googled enough of something. So I put her on my community tab because she, she saved my dog. Like literally. Because I was at the end of my rope on what to choose because you would think Tractor Supply and all these places would have good foods because they're animal feeds and it's about money. You know, they're paying the stores like to carry their food. So you can't even trust them. Well, I will tell you one thing right now. Every single bag of food at Walmart is garbage. So if you buy any dog food at Walmart, get rid of it. Even the Walmart brand, all of it is bad. So I learned a lot about dog food, spending a lot of time on this girl's channel. Um, she does take Frosty Paws as a treat, but not the kind with peanut butter. The kind with peanut butter in it, you have to be aware of because the peanut butter is not real peanut butter. It's fake and it turns to sugar. So you don't want the peanut butter brand. But this girl, I'm going to get her up here. She is so awesome. I'm telling you, when she did this, it, it totally changed everything in my world on learning how to understand dog foods. She's a pet nutritionist and a trainer. And she started doing something that I did when I first got a computer. She started Googling every single ingredient and learning what they were. Like I did my task manager with every executable coming into my computer. <laughs> That's how I learned computer skills, people. I pulled up the task manager and looked at what was coming in. But here is her channel. All right, Ty. She breaks down everything and she even has a cute list on how she does it. She tells you what ingredients is bad for dogs and what is like never buy anything that has meat byproduct in it. That's what a lot of Walmart has. She tells you the difference between everything and why draw, you know, dry dog food versus the can everything. And I have learned so much through this young girl. And I am so thankful I come across her channel. So we picked one of the dog foods that she had on her oh hell yeah list. And my dog is doing amazing. We, we, we don't have a pet co, but we have a pet supplies plus. And we found the perfect dog food for her. And... The, the pate, we, she doesn't do the stews, but we found the canned pate where we can give her a little bit of both. She explains why dry kibble is really not the best, but you can get some that's okay. But the can is actually better where I was always told that was more of a treat, but we give her half and half because it can get pricey. But she tells you, like, the ingredients that holds the kibble together. It's, she, it's just amazing. Just sit down and watch just this one video. You will learn so much. So I will definitely be promoting her video for that reason. And since we started ours on the Stella and Chewy's Essentials, and we got her the cage-free prairie that's also for hip and joint which she's starting into the age where she's getting arthritis and you do not have to switch. You can literally start a dog on that as a puppy. They can go into it as an adult and a senior without switching the foods. And it's a godsend. Let me tell you, since we switched her dog foods and she's on this new dog food, it has been an amazing change. <laughs> and another thing that I want to recommend too is um, 
there's a new multivitamin out called Petco Lab. Let me see. Pet Lab Company. No, it's Pet Lab Co. Let me get it up here. Here is a video on it that's probably an advertisement, but I have to say my dog's been on this. She's on her third container of it, and it's a chewable, and I'm going to put the link in here. Hey, Vin. Um, this chewable vitamin is awesome. I have never felt her fur is so soft. She's been on this for three months now, and I swear by this vitamin. It's amazing. So I stuck the link of the commercial. It's only three minutes or something. And we start, and she loves it. She comes in and gets her chew for the day, and it's amazing. It's a multivitamin. It's great. So there's two good links if you have a dog. Please check out the last two links. You will learn a lot. <laughs> Seriously. And I wish people would share more of this information um, with people because I'm telling you, I thought we were going to lose her. It scared me so bad. I thought if she dies, I'll just die because, you know, our fur babies only have so much life time with us in the first place. And a lot of lives were getting cut in half because they're just not making it. And there was, uh, what's her face? She played in... Um, there's a blonde that does a commercial called Badlands. It's uh, where they added probiotics to this dog food. She played in um, Grey's Anatomy. She was the blonde at the beginning. Well, she's got a ranch with her mom where they make homemade food. And she talks about it a lot in a commercial of things that are bad. But I'm telling you, whew. And how short lifespans were being in animals. It's because they're not eating good food. So I'm glad we switched. It's a little bit more pricier going to, you know, a place like pet care or whatever. But your pet's worth it if you love them. That's how I look at it. So we got her on good food now. She's doing great. Her diarrhea is gone. And I am so happy not to have to take her out twice in 15 minutes. And she's, she's doing a lot healthier. But she is got, getting arthritis, though. And the doctor has her on an over-the-counter medicine to help her out with some pain. And my dog hates thunderstorms. And she cannot do firecrackers. And I was ready to kill a neighbor out here the other day. It is a term, a figure of speech. I don't murder people. But um, they were letting off firecrackers, and my dog is, like, clawing at my chair, clawing at me. She has, like, post-traumatic stress disorder. She can't handle loud sounds, so we bought her Thunder Wonders, which has melatonin in it. And I have to give her one, but I didn't know how long they were going to last because it takes, like, a half an hour to kick in, so... I didn't give her one the other night, but I do when we have the 4th of July because I know the firecrackers are going to last a while. But God forbid, I told my husband, there's no way we could leave the house with her on the 4th. Like to go celebrate with family because she would have my doors torn down. She just does not like it at all. I've never had a dog in my life, as many dogs as I've owned in my lifetime, I have never had one afraid of thunder like her. It's awful. Hey, Stacy. Stacy's our kitty girl. <laughs> Hey, 
Did you find any good yarn on that site I shared with you? Put Stacy's channel in here. You want a nice channel that comes on and she crafts on her channel and somebody just to sit and hang out with you can talk to her lurk on her stream and just craft with her you have stacy sometimes i do that if i know somebody's going to be on for a while is i make the time sometimes if i can catch them and i'll just sit and craft the other day i was watching michelle scott crafted and it was really fun i wasn't crafting with her but i wished i would have had my stuff out she is she's hysterical when she crafts she goes into her zone and she just gets so caught up in it and and it's hard to craft and chat because if you zone and you're really into what you're doing she'll be talking away you should have seen all of us blinging her trying to get her attention <laughs> so funny oh my goodness i'm gonna promote michelle in here tonight even though she's not here sometimes she lurks but here's michelle's channel and she's a lot of fun she's really into the grungy stuff and she's a pink girl I call her Scotty. I tell her all the time, we're going to try to convert her to be a blue girl. <laughs> she says, nope. She says, I'm a pink girl. She likes her shabby chic. But I tell her all the time, no, we're going to turn you into a blue girl. But she's going to be having a sale. I think she does stock her stashes like three times a year, I believe. And she'll be having one in December. And she is great when she has her sales. They're busy, fast, a lot of people after her stuff. <laughs> she gets, she gives, finds us our laces and all the good stuff we like to use. And then some. She does fabric bundles and all that happy stuff. I look at these pictures and they make me want ginger. Like, I just want to eat a gingerbread man off this piece of paper. And drink this cup of hot cocoa. I love digitals. They're so awesome. So tonight's ephemera cutting, and then I have to pick my book out to start once I get the ephemera. Some of the ephemera ready. I have a um, book I want to pick out, and I'm going to be starting a Christmas journal in front of everybody. I think Etsy's getting mad at me because I haven't had anything in my shops most of the year. <laughs> I got an email saying, you got to reconfirm your bank account. I'm like, what the heck? <sighs> so I got to get back into doing Etsy at some point. I'm telling you, I need a clone. There's not enough time in the day to get everything done that we want to get done. I love journaling cards. I think that my biggest weakness in crafting is journaling cards and ephemera 
I love the ephemera stuff. It's just cutesy. Die cuts. Oh my goodness. I love my die cut machine. Oh, we got Viv to get one. Viv Texas Sparkle, we got her talked into it. She's been starting to create some different styles of, of ephemera. I am going to turn that girl into a junk journaler yet. Or a journaler. She's already making the little sewing ruffles. And they're so cute. She's been having them in her live sales. And she's been dyeing papers and envelopes. We're getting her there slowly but surely. Viv, if you watch this later, I hope you get a giggle. Because <laughs> I like her. I met her. She's She was always selling jewelry. And now we get her into doing some crafting stuff. Sometimes when I have my sales... You know, when I did my live sales, I didn't know if I really wanted to sell stuff that was done or sell ephemera. I actually enjoy the ephemera part just as much as I do the journals. Fun, fun, fun. I love gingerbread. My mom has this recipe that my grandmother passed down to her. And oh my God, it's the best gingerbread cookies you'll ever eat in your life. They're not like the regular ginger snaps you find on the market. They're a soft cake-like cookie. And they taste so good. You might want to take her out. I had her in her pen. Mike. 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 Hello. Yeah. Take her out right away. She might have to go. I had her in her pen earlier, but she may need to go potty right now. Well, I'm just saying... Because I had her out earlier, but she, uh, didn't go her normal time tonight. Like, right before I started my live stream. She's off schedule. I have a pen outside that when I worked at my bookstore, as long as it was a nice day. My dog would hang outside for a little bit, and I think she misses it. We put we put two pens together because she's a bigger dog. So I put her outside so she can have a break from us, too. She's probably like, I'm tired of you people. So she was out there for like two or three hours today, and she gets really tired. She's like, I gotta go pot a dad. I laid out that ham, too. want to cook some ham up. Have some food to pluck from. I'm telling you, food is getting so pricey. Can't believe how fast groceries is climbing. I'm glad we stocked up in our pantry on Augustin Farms. And if you haven't heard of them, you just type it in. And it's all dehydrated foods and all you need is boiling water. And it lasts 15 to 25 years on your shelf. So that if food prices get too out of control, you can have it to fall back on. And it's like... You boil water and you just add it. It's like the Patriot foods, but 
more because you don't get just a pack you get a can and you can find it on sale sometimes it uh on amazon good night Cherise. take care thanks for coming in sweet dreams thank you stacy these are digitals i looked up earlier on etsy and i got some let me see um if i can get this link to work I don't know if I can or not, but this gives you some idea. You better be a small link. But I do try to help people because I know the times are getting tough. And of course, it's going to be a brat. Let me see if this will pull up. Hold on. I really hate when they have super duper long links. There's no excuse for this. Where do I cut this off at? Let me try to here and see if this link will work for you all. Let me try. Yeah, it came up. Well, nutri, nutri something. But if you scroll down, you'll see August and Farms. And like, they have one pound, seven ounce, number 10 can of dehydrated potato shreds for $12.29. Now, I will tell you guys, this stuff is not flavorful. So it's good if you have some kind of flavoring like bouillon cubes and maybe like a bacon salt or something that's got a little flavor. And uh, they have dehydrated butter. They have broccoli soup mixed. And you can see the different prices from full to lower. They have a powdered peanut butter. But it's kind of like the Patriot stuff that you see. They have banana chips. You can get it in great big quantities of buckets. Or you can get it in the little. And they do have. We did, we've did. we tried the pancakes so far. And a couple of the other items. They have spinach and everything. And I'm telling you it's good. It's really good. But we started buying this stuff a while ago. And stockpiling. Because like I said it's. 15 to 25 year shelf life so as food gets higher we'll have this and it wouldn't hurt to get <coughs> coffee and tea bags and different things like that if you have like plastic containers with screw on lids we did um oats and you know certain containers and what i did was I took juice containers and I took milk cartons, anything that has a screw on cap that where you can tighten it and like tea jugs. Like I like the pure leaf tea. So we took some of those jugs. What I did was I used blue Dawn and I clean them out, but then I put a cap of white vinegar in with a blue Dawn and run water and shake them up. It will kill every smell. Like even if you use tomato juice containers or Tostitos, anything like that, if you put that in there and you want to save like jars or whatever, you put white vinegar is amazing. It like kills the smell out of everything. So where you don't have like sour milk taste or anything like that. So we cleaned up some jugs. My opinion, I don't know where 
the United States is going. I don't know what's going to happen with inflation. My advice to people is they have water testing kits also on Amazon. Find yourself a nice waterfall that gives you natural water where you're at and start testing. So you always have a backup system. Another thing I've been watching is Doug and Stacy on the grid where off the grid where he uses rainwater and has a charcoal filtering system. And that's what they use to shower and drink and everything. And they teach you how to purify water. It's very interesting how they do it all. But I am a planner. I was a Girl Scout. So plan B's work for me. <laughs> Sometimes even plan C's. But I told my hubby, I want to have a good water source because you just don't know what's going to happen. Always find things that's out there near you if you can. Coffee's good. They've been showing a lot of uh, very educating videos, I think, on YouTube commercials that sh show certain things too that people can use but anybody's got any tips or anything please share them all right stacy thanks for coming you you're always busy woman Me, myself, I think people should have a gasoline generator, a little bit of solar power, a little bit of wood, like a cook stove. I think you can't go wrong having multiple backups for stuff. I remember as a kid, I was growing up, we had a neighbor, we called her the cat lady. <laughs> she was so nice. And I would go visit her. And I remember she was by herself. I don't I don't know when her husband passed away. But I never knew her husband. But I just remember. Um, she lived right down the road from my parents. And I watched her. And how this woman survived on her own. And I remember she had a trailer. With a um, cook stove in it. And what she did. To take care of herself in the end. Because you know you don't always have good money to retire on either. She cut off. She would have like. Um, the front the front part of her trailer was her kitchen and her living room. And then you would walk back. And she would, she had like. I don't know what was totally in the back of her. I just remember where her bathroom was. Because when I'd visit. She had a blanket that cut off the room and had this cook stove. It was a wood cook stove where you could cook on it or heat. She would blanket off the rest of the house and only have the living room and her kitchen. And she would sleep on the couch. And I remember she did have one family member that visited her. But even up in age, she would go outside and chop down some of the wood of the trees in her yard. And that's what, that's how she survived. That's how she made it till the day she passed away is to have this. Cause I remember visiting her place one time when our dog disappeared, cause he loved going to her house and I went there and I remember, Oh my God, her toilet seat was so cold. Cause she had that part of the trailer cut off and it was in the middle of winter. And I thought my butt was going to freeze. But I had asked to use her bathroom because I used to go sit and talk with her. But she had it all toasty in the front of her trailer. It was just really, she was just a really nice lady. I love my elderly neighbors. I used to visit all the elderly people and listen to their stories. But it was sad when she passed away because I really liked her. She was one of my favorite neighbors as a kid. But she was a worker, I will tell you that. And 
I remember my grandmother, I heard stories, neighborhood told me, where she, um, when her and my grandfather got their first house back then, they did raisings, almost like barn raisings, but house raisings where the neighborhood would help. There was no such thing as pan construction workers. And my grandfather was in the coal mine. And I remember a neighbor told me, yeah, your grandmother, she was a worker. She said, he said, your grandfather would go to work and she's up there digging out the foundation with her hands where their house was built. She would take buckets down the hill and she dug out that whole foundation where the house is built on her own. I thought, holy moly, if these kids had to do that nowadays, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. The old fashioned way. And the two by fours were railroad ties <laughs> in the house. But man, was it solidly built. Very well built home. My dad was raised there and I stayed there with my grandmother because she never, they never left. They stayed in the house they built. She didn't have a couch. She had a Davenport. <laughs> She would pull the couch out into a bed and I would, I would share the Davenport with her. I love staying at Grandma's house. I was always packing my suitcase going, I'm going to Grandma's. That's what I tell my mom every Friday. Grandma time. And all those Valentines and those old Christmas cards that we play with on here as crafters with ephemera. She had a whole stack of them. I don't know what they ever did with her cards. Probably threw them away. But as a kid, she had this one dresser in her dining room. It had a door with a knob on each side and it had drawers in the center. And I played postman Penny with her letters, post lady, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> And I'd pretend like I was the mailman delivering all them. And I played with them all the time, never dreaming that I'd be using them as crafting pieces one day. <laughs> I just think that's so funny. My grandma would give me all her cards. She'd say, okay, here, this is your playtime. Because that's what I would do. She had an old piano, player piano in her house that held her knickknacks. Half the, che the, the keys were chipped and stuff. That's what it was. And I remember when, after she passed away, nobody wanted it. So my brother took it. And um, he had it redone. He had it sanded down. And he, he went to turn it into a gun cabinet for his hunting rifles. And as they were sanding it down, it was really cool. Because they found whoever he had doing it called him and said, hey, we have something we want to show you. So my brother went to the guy that was doing it. And here they found a company on it. And it had two men with a year in it. And they had the, the um, what they call them, the handlebar mustaches. And it was a company with their pictures engraved into the player piano so my brother left it he told him to leave it and when it came out as the gun cabinet they left that at the top and he turned it into a gun cabinet i thought that was so cool so he'll pass that down to his son i'm sure but i thought oh but that was it was awesome to see and then and then i see everybody using the player piano music sheets. I think that's funny. To craft with. We used to strum on that piano. We would just beat the thingies. Oh, here we go. Really? Hold on. I'm reporting it one at a time. 
Freaking bots. That's the first time I've seen them in here. It's just crazy. You know, th talking about having a, um, You know, like apple trees and things like that. I always thought it would be cool to have like, I wanted to do it this past summer, but I never did get to get to it. I wanted to have like a walnut tree, an apple tree, and raspberry, like blackberry bushes put in our yard so that we would always have a food source. You know, because you could always make applesauce and stuff like that. And I like walnuts. I used to hear stories like I knew this one guy. He told me a story one time when they were going through depression, the depression. He shared stories that was shared down through the generations of how some people had families and uh, they had gardens and different things and how he heard stories of people like stealing out people's gardens just to eat. But then the gardeners knew they were doing it and they didn't care. They shared with some people and I thought that was nice. I don't know how it would be nowadays. <laughs> Probably get shot. <laughs> but, you know, back in the older days, it seemed like some people were more friendlier. I wouldn't be mad at somebody if they stole it out of my garden. I would share. But I've been watching some really incredible people and the ideas they've been coming up with. Like people in the cities that don't have the land. How they, this one lady, she did a video on YouTube and it was really cool where she used totes. She took and she took like some plastic totes that she had because she just wanted to do like a little herb garden and some potatoes and tomatoes. And she cut holes in them and then set them up on a couple blocks for the water to drain. And she did like an herb garden. It was really cool and it worked. And then I was telling my dad about it. And he said that he had grown potatoes in five gallon buckets before. So I was telling my husband, you don't necessarily have to plow your land. There's other ways that you can have a little bit of something. Then I watched this other guy. I forget what country he was in. He wasn't in the United States. Where he had a bunch of tin. Like those great big round tin like type things. And he was growing plants in them. And I think it was Krista Creations. 
who was showing us her backyard and how they had really cute little greenhouses. She did a real good job. Randy, were you in here when I said we had a bunch of guys in here? You were saying I had all females and there was a bunch of males in here earlier. I was trying to catch your attention. CDC's a male. John's a male. James is a male. We had a whole bunch of guys in here. Vin's a male. Oh, I forgot to put Vin's channel in here. He's a gamer. Hold on. Well, yep, there was a bunch of males in here. Here's Vin's channel. Let me get Randy's channel. I don't even know if I put Randy's in here. I'm getting, I'm slacking. Um, Cement comes in here. He's a male. Um, Llama Monster was in here the other night, and he's a guy, too. I like a Llama Monster. These I will have to trim with my trimmer. These are my paper pieces. They're so stinking cute. These are ones that you can turn into books if you want to so i'll put these aside oh no i got these two to cut first before i do the paper trimmers i'm slacking i missed two yeah i did really good Looking for some items tonight. I even have some digitals. I don't even think I even printed yet. I think I have the Tracy Fox labels too. On my external hard drive. I haven't even printed those yet. The word ones. I think I bought them. One that Michelle was showing on her channel. These are cute. I might have to do two Wednesdays of ephemera because I still have a bunch left to cut. But at least I will have a good start. Look at this Santa. Isn't he cute? He's in a hot air balloon. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cute. I love these digitals. I don't know if I'm going to make one or two journals. I haven't decided. Because I might want to keep one and sell one. We'll see. Cute. 
cutesiness, cutesiness. Cussy Cutting. That's cute. I like it. Let me put this over here. All righty. We read the chat. Thank you. Hey, Mark. Uh oh, Mark. Who was Ren? I don't remember. Here's Mark's channel. Are you sure it was here? I'd have had you in blue if you were here. Make sure you got the right stream. A male voice? You mean up on the panel? Or somebody that was typing? Because I don't very rarely have anybody on my panel. So you sure you got the right stream? I don't know. Because I am confrontational too. So if somebody gets lippy, I will go back at them. But I never had anybody on my panel yet who has been out of hand. So I don't know. Because most of the time it's just me. But if there is confrontation, I deal with it. Just like when I mod for other people, I don't feel right about blocking people. So what I would do if somebody acts out as I time out, because I think it's up to the channel owner to do the blocking. You know, the complete hidden thing. Because I try to respect their wishes, but I'll time a person out if I feel that they're acting out. But I can take a lot more than some people too. You know, you got to understand I ran a chat room for six years on Yahoo. So there's not too much I haven't heard or seen on here. <laughs> I've been on the web since 2001. So some things I let slide where people jump on it faster. I try to give chances to people and stuff like that too. Where some just have no toleration policy. Like, for instance... I went into this one guy's chat, had no clue he didn't like emojis. And I put a smiley face in with a hello, everyone. And the next thing I know, Nightbot times me out. And I think that's a little ridiculous. I think some people's rules are a little too strict on here. <laughs> but I don't believe in spamming emojis either. You know, like you don't use any words and all you do is spam, spam, spam emojis. I think that just gets on my nerves. Because... Yahoo booters used to use smiley faces to lag out the chat room. So I can only imagine what they do to live streams if they keep spamming them. Um, my rules are pretty easy, though. I try to address people first. Um, I had a person that come in text. I could tell when they're trolls, just like I used to be able to tell when booters would enter chat rooms. And trolls, I don't mind. It just depends on how obnoxious they get. I don't like racist names. Like with the N-word in them, I will block those right off the bat. But uh, we have a Satan that comes in here and visits. At first, I thought it was one of my grandsons playing a prank. <laughs> here it's somebody, I don't even know who they are. I will not mod that name just because, hey, I don't believe in the devil, but that's just me. It's a preference. But that person's never caused any problems that's come in here. 
but you know somebody was like satan and some people do block over names they even used to do it in chat back in the day i don't block because a person picks a certain name it just depends on what it is but i won't block the satan one because he's never done anything or acted up but if it's, you know, somebody has a derogatory name, that's different. But I let a lot slide off me because I'm used to it. <laughs> we had some trolls come in one night. You're too old to be here. Now, I think that's funny. Because I tell them people when they do that kind of stuff, when they're acting stupid. <laughs> If it wasn't for my age, your butt would be here because Bill Gates is older than me. So, hello. <laughs> I said, you better come up with something better than that. You know, like I can come back at certain people depending on what they say. And then somebody come in here one time going, you're too fat to be here. But I was like, really? Are you going to really fat shame? I said, what's next? Your mama jokes? Like, I don't care. You know what I mean? <laughs> about petty stuff but if my mods want to tie them out go for it i'm used to dealing with idiots on here so stuff like that doesn't surprise me but my rules are pretty easy if you feel the need to time a person out you go for it just don't time out somebody that comes in because sometimes they can be joking with me. Like my friend Deb will come in here and she'll say stuff like, listen to you, blah, blah, talking too much. You know what I mean? Like that's a friend. So sometimes you got to watch because my friends pick on me too. To know who to block and who not to block. Because <laughs> I don't pay attention to the little things, I guess you could say. I got people that have always picked on me. And I'm okay with it. Just all depends. But um, I just tell my mods, don't block other mods until, you know, we discuss it. Because sometimes people can go on a power trip, too. I was in a chat room like that once. They had moderators. And this one guy was totally ridiculous. Um... I was having a conversation with someone that I had been friends with online for a long time. And because he didn't get the attention and it was a female thing. He, he was a narcissistic pig. If a female would come in and they wouldn't say hi to him. And they would talk to other males. He would, he would time you out. And I knew the owner of the chat room and I said, dude, listen, you got a moderator in here. It's on a power trip and you need to fix it. I went to the person that owned the actual chat room and I told him what was going on. And he says, you know what? He says, there's been like a few other females that's complained about him. And, you know, he was a friend of mine, but I can see that, you know, he says, you've never lied to me. You're telling the truth. So he unmodded him and he lost his moderation because he was a dweeb. So I just tell my mods, just don't power trip. You know, we're here to relax, hang out and have some fun. But power tripping, the only thing so. I'm just going to trim these down because these are pages. No cussy cutting on these. So I'm pretty easy to get along with. No, you're not CDC. I'll get to patty, paddle after you. All right, Penny. Thanks for coming. Sweet dreams, Penny. She has her videos early and her lives early. I'm a late night person. 
She's our lucky shiny penny. <laughs> How's your puppies, Mark? Did you find homes for all your puppies? He had the cutest babies. My dogs. I had a blonde lab before when we lived in our old house. Her name was Samantha. And then me and my husband have a dog right now. She's part Staffordshire Bull Terrier and part lab. And she's so cute. She's my baby. It's funny how she has the genetics of both dogs. Like, she's got the loyalty of the staffy. Not saying labs aren't loyal, too. But. She is really dedicated. Like, she lays at the bottom of the bed. <laughs> Face in the doorway, so God forbid if you're an intruder. <laughs> she's a very loyal puppy. But she's funny because when her ears are back, I can see the staffy in her. But when she's just regularly laying, she looks like a retriever. I'll show you a picture. She's so cute. She's my fur baby. She's a spoiled fur baby. But she's, she's starting to get the, uh, there's my baby. See, when her, her ears are back, you can see the staffy in her. But when her ears are up, like perky, you can see the lab. She is one solid built dog. She's so cute. She's my baby. I swear she has a dog purr. But she's 70 pounds and she squishes. There's another picture of her. There you can see the lab in her a little more with her ears forward. Isn't she cute? My, um, thing up here, my camera up here is not as clear as the one that's downstairs. But here's, here's one here. Look. See if I can get this to work. Wait a minute. Watch this. Yeah. Sandy, speak. Good girl. It's your mommy, baby. Speak. Tell Sandy hi. Say hi, Sandy. Speak. Good girl. It's your mommy, baby. Speak. Tell Sandy hi. Say hi, Sandy. Speak. <laughs> she hears me play this to people and she comes running in the room like where's that dog coming from she's so cute she's mommy's baby yes she is you're my hubby he fights me for her mark no sir she's mommy's baby she's mommy baby Yep. <laughs> She's only daddy's baby. And unless it's and you know, it's funny because when a storm happens, she runs for mommy. I said, She's mommy's baby. She knows who protects her. Oh, you took the last one up north. Oh, that's good though. See, that's what happened with us. We had a husky that we bred with a lab and um i told the people when we you know we found a home for the puppies i was talking to my vet and i, I never thought of you know the way he was thinking it was just too funny i said well they're a mix and what i did was i had all their shots and stuff and then i I had a, an amount for them. It was like $7 a puppy. It was no big deal. It was just because I got all their shots and I had their record books ready and everything. 
And I said, well, what do people don't want to pay if they're a mixed breed? This is what I said to my vet. And he says, well, he says, you can look at it this way. He says, if they don't want to pay for them in the first place, then they're not going to want them and be good, be good owners. He says, because there's no price on a puppy. And I go, you know, I never thought of it that way. But they reimburse me for the first shots and the warming and all that kind of stuff is what I did. And then I put my address and phone number inside the, the little, I got little um, pamphlets for the puppies. And I said, I don't care how old they are or how young they are, do not take my puppies to the pound. I said, if you do not want them, you call me anytime. I don't care if they're a senior dog. I don't care. And I will take them back because I did not have these puppies to be put into a pound. So I made sure all the people knew where I was coming from when I found homes for them. The only ones that didn't show up was the last owners that were supposed to take the runt. And my kids fell in love with her. And the people never came, so we kept her. Because I picked two out of the litter. Well, they picked me. <laughs> one was a blonde lab, and the other one had the husky look. And I couldn't pick between both of them. They were both girls. And they would fight. They would growl at each other climbing into my lap. So I couldn't choose between them. So I kept them both. And then we got stuck with the runt, which is okay. Because she turned out to outlive them all. And she was so stinking cute. Never seen a dog like her in my life. I told my husband she should have been a circus dog. The run of the litter would stick her face. We, we got a baby pool. And they used to go outside and take turns. Well, the ones I kept was Samantha, Shadow, and Duchess. Well, Shadow had to go in the pool last, Mark, because she peed in the pool. I swear. She was like a little kid and couldn't hold it. <laughs> and I told my husband, oh, my God, she peed in the pool one time when we first started putting him in the pool. So we had to put her in last because I had to wash the pool out <laughs> and I couldn't have the other dogs going in after. Oh, my gosh. It was so funny. But the run of the litter was Duchess. And she would literally stick her face in the pool water and blow bubbles. Never seen a dog ever do this. <laughs> but it is cute how they all have their own personas. You know, their own little personalities. But oh my gosh, it was so funny watching her blow bubbles. So I was glad. But she was the run of the litter and she outlived them all. She was the last one. But I feel like they don't live long enough. Like their their lifespans are just cut so short. Our fur babies never last long enough for sure. The longest animals I ever had was my two black cats, Hope and Heather. And uh, they were sisters from the same litter. There was a girl that we went to school with. And we went up to get them. They were part Siamese. And I don't know what the rest. All I know was the males and the litter all come out with the blue eyes and the gray tipped ears. They were so cute. And the females came out looking like the Sheba cat. In the Sheba food commercial where they were real sleek and black. Except Hope. She was a little plump with a white spot on her chest. And I called her preacher. <laughs> but I loved Heather and Hope. And we had them. We were blessed. Very blessed. The longest animals I ever had. And they lived to be 21 and 22 years old. And I was shocked. Because when I signed up for Pinch Me. They asked if you had pets. And we, you know, I filled out the questionnaire. Because they would send you like free animal samples of food. 
and the drop down list i kept i told pinch me i said i i have two cats but i can't answer your question because your drop down list didn't go as old as they it stopped at 10 so i couldn't put their correct age in because it it stopped at 10 like all they think all cats die at 10 the cream puff is the longest living cat lived to be 38 years old I think it was like 30 and three days to the uh, world book of records on google i found it but mine lived to be 21 and 22 and they were good um heather ended up having kidney failure which she was going into it which uh that's what happens in the senior cats and it was to a point with her where I couldn't tell if she was in pain, but because they tell you certain signs, like I look up certain signs when they tell you their age, when they're in pain or whatever. And her thing was, she just was getting so thin and she was literally sitting in the litter pan, like because she just couldn't tell if she had to go or not. And I told my husband, I said, we have to put her down. I said, she might not seem like she's in pain, but we can't have her sitting in the litter pan all the time. And I said, and, and it, it just took a lot out of her, the getting up and going to the bathroom. So it was time. I think they tell you, you know, I try to let it happen natural because I hate feeling like a murderer when it comes to your pets, but it was time for her. And then, because I don't want my animals to suffer. And Hope, the same thing happened to her that happened to my cat, Callie. I had, that was a wild kitten abandoned in the bushes, not what, a far away from our house. We had a neighbor bring her. She was abandoned. Heck, the kitten wasn't even weaned. We had to teach her how to eat and stuff. But they had thyroid and they could be put on a special medicine they were put on science diet and that's all you could do towards the end there there's really not much you can do except to keep up in and it like sucks she went from a 13 pound cat to four pounds it like sucked the life out of her the, her thyroid and we had her to where we couldn't do no more for her and then we just had to put her down. She was still purring the day we took her, but she just was so skinny. And she was turning into skin and bones. And I told my husband it's time because there was nothing more we could do for her, nor could the vet. So her and Hope were put down for the same things. But it's really hard when you get to put your animals down for sure. And then something else that I was shocked over that I learned about dogs is a lot of our neighborhood kids when we were growing up, like my parents never allowed animals in the house or anything like that when I was growing up. It's just the way they were brought up. But I couldn't believe how many people threw out leftovers to their animals and they didn't know back then you know, things about dogs and my parents still didn't know because I think one thing that vets should have in their office that they don't is you'll see like all these advertisements for like tick and flea medicines and all this kind of stuff. But why don't they have a pamphlet that tells you what foods are toxic to dogs? Like cats, my cats to live to 21 and 22 years old, they ate chocolate ice cream. They, they, she, one of them, she, you couldn't eat a Frito in front of Hope. She would pull it from you. She loved barbecue chips and they lived that long. Not that they didn't had it every day, but you know what I mean? Just anytime I snacked, they were eating with me. Dogs can't have onions. They can't have garlic. There is chocolate. They can't have none of that stuff because it's so toxic. My parents didn't know that. 
And my dad, he cooks a lot of foods with onions and he threw out leftovers to his one dog. And I was talking to my daughter and she was saying something about their dog acting funny. And I said, oh, I said, please call them and tell them not to give. I hope they didn't give him anything with onions and stuff. And then because I said, gee, dad loves to cook with onions and stuff. And she said, you know what? They probably never knew. Because they were they 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 didn't do it all the time like they had dog food, but then just every once in a while they would add food extra, like you know turkey dinner with stuffing, which the stuffing had onions in it. And I told my daughter it's so toxic to them, and I never knew that either. I started googling every little thing when my dog would you know, sit at the bottom of the chair begging, like if I would be eating apples or I would be eating something, I constantly was Googling, can a dog eat this? Can a dog eat this? And I learned so much about what dogs can and cannot have that it was shocking. So when my daughter called up and, you know, she did tell them, my dad and mom still didn't know that they couldn't have onions. And he, that's why he was acting funny. Because they had that in the food and they had to make sure, you know, he didn't have enough of it to kill him. But I don't know why vets don't have that on their shelves. They should have a pamphlet, you know, something like beware of these toxic foods for your dog. Because it seems like cats can eat anything and get away with it, but dogs can't. And I wish they would have. Because I got a heck of an education owning dogs over cats for sure but i can't tell you how many families i grew up with as kids that never knew that and of course with you know having the computers and stuff and technology you can find things out a lot faster than back then too because we didn't have that kind of knowledge but my mom was like Oh my God. She's like, my parents lived on a farm and that's all they did was throw out scraps. She said, we didn't have any idea this stuff was toxic. I'm like, yep, neither did I. Live and learn. Because my, my husband would like be sitting on a chair eating like his cashews. <laughs> My dog's like snipping it up and we found out she could have a little bit of cashews. So she would eat cashews with him. It was funny. She loves peanut butter. But her favorite treat's Frosty Paws. She gets a Frosty Paw at night. She loves those things in the freezer section at the store. But we don't give her the peanut butter flavor, though, because I did look that up, and they said that it turns to sugar. So we just get her the regular. I don't know what's in it, but she sure loves it. I'm trying to cut these as close. As I can without taking too much off because those will be cute as cover pages. My hubby's dream dog is a rot puppy, but I told him there is no way unless we raised her with a puppy that she's ever going to accept a dog in here. <laughs> My dog will not share her toys. <laughs> I could see if another dog come in here and took her bone. She'd have a heart attack. She'd be like, no way am I sharing. Uh-uh. She 
She's so funny with my hubby. He comes home and he tries to take her bone. <laughs> she puts her butt in the air, <laughs> wanting him to play with her. <laughs> she takes her bone and she keeps walking away with it in her mouth. But she's got a little butt in the air. You can tell she's being playful. But oh my gosh, they're so funny. He'll be watching TV. And she she wants his attention, so she'll grab a toy and throw it at him. As <laughs> she carries it over in her mouth and tosses at him. Or he'll pretend like he's nodding off, like he's sleeping, and she'll go, Woof, woof. She goes at the bottom of his feet. She'll be having her head on his recliner going, It's so funny. She's like, You're not sleeping. It's my time. It's the Rona's time. I call her Rony Pepperoni. She's a cutie patootie. And it was funny how I found her. Picture on Facebook. Some guy was holding her up, and I thought, oh, my God, she is the one. It was funny because there was another guy that had puppies on there. It was full-blooded. And I almost picked up a female, and something told me, you know, how you get that gut feeling in your pit of your stomach that says, I made a decision I shouldn't have made. And I had gotten in contact with somebody about another dog first. And I was like, sorry, I have to cancel. Something just told me not to get that particular dog. And then she showed up. And I was like, yes, she's the one. And I did not have any bad feelings whatsoever about getting her. It was funny. I brought her home. I met him in a light up parking lot at Walmart, you know, just to be safe because you never know. And then I brought her home and I had her in my coat. My husband came home from work and it was so funny. He saw the look on my face. What did you do? <laughs> and I'm looking at him like, what? He goes, I know you're up to something. I could see the look on your face. And then she was moving around in my hand. He goes, what did you do? <laughs> I go, I caught a puppy. And then. <laughs> he was sitting in a chair and he held her up and smelled baby or dog puppy breath. He loves puppy breath and that's all there was. He was lost. I go, I knew it. I sniffed that puppy breath and that's all it took. <laughs> and now he's full of rotten. Okay. So that part's done. So I can put this aside. And... We shall continue next week with some more ephemera, but I got a good bit of it ready tonight. Here's my pile started towards my Christmas journal, and I have more to cut down here, and we shall continue. So with that, I want to thank everybody for coming in and visiting with me, but I am going to go because I'm getting tired. So you all take care and have a great rest of your night or morning, I should say. Bye. Mwah.